hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I know it's hard to grasp that right about now, running and not being weary and walking and not fainting and renewing our strength. But they that wait, for them all of that shall happen in due time. I cannot tell you what it means as a son of this great state of Indiana to come back home to celebrate the life of my friend and my congresswoman Julia Carson. One of the high moments of my life, if I died tomorrow, one of the high moments of my life is receiving a phone call from her one day after she'd introduced her legislation to give the Congressional Gold Medal to Rosa Parks. Imagine, imagine. Here I am in Los Angeles, heard by millions on national radio from Indiana, receiving a phone call from my congresswoman from Indiana, asking me if I could help her to rally the troops inside of Congress to bestow upon the mother of the civil rights movement the highest civilian honor one can receive in this country, and yet she had not received it. And so for those who listen to the Tom Joyner Morning Show, you know I ain't making this up. We went on the radio every day for about eight weeks, and I did my own version of a congressional roll call. And we called the names of every member of the House and every member of the Senate, gave out their phone numbers, their fax numbers, their email addresses, until, until, they granted Rosa Parks, as she well deserved, the Congressional Gold Medal while she could still appreciate it and receive it. And unless something has happened in the last couple of days, Julia Carson's legislation to present a Congressional Gold Medal to Rosa Parks still has the most number of votes for any Congressional Gold Medal ever given in this country. The most votes of any Congressional Gold Medal ever bestowed. But it says something about Julia Carson that once she got to Congress, the first thing she wanted to do was to honor another black woman who had made it possible for her to be sitting in the halls of Congress and quite frankly for all of us to be up in here today celebrating the life and legacy of Julia Carson. As has been already intimated, these rituals that we call funerals are really about us. It's not so much about Julia Carson, it's about those of us who are alive and remain. And so the question for me whenever I go to a service like this is always, what's the lesson of the life lived? And what's the blessing of the legacy left? What's the lesson and what's the blessing of this life lived and this legacy left? Let me just leave three things on your mind right quick before I take my seat and make room for the minister. Number one, for me, the lesson of Julia Carson's life how might I put this? Let me just call this the Carsonian formulation on leadership. The Carsonian formulation on leadership. You can't lead people if you don't love people. And you can't save people if you don't serve people. You can't lead them if you don't love them. And you can't save them if you don't serve them. Which means then that those of us who are alive and remain and have the courage to wrestle with to marinate on that Carsonian leadership formulation have to ask ourselves a couple of questions. If you can't lead without loving or save without serving, one, what is the depth of your love for your people? And number two, what is the quality of your service to them? Those are the issues we have to wrestle with beyond this day. What's the depth of our love for everyday people? And what is the quality of our service to them? That is the definition of leadership. You call yourself a leader and ain't nobody following you, you just out for a walk. You just out getting some exercise. But what is the depth of your love? What is the depth of your love and what is the quality of your service? It's the first lesson I hope we take from the life and legacy of Julia Carson. Number two, that love 
wins. Love wins. And love wins. What do we mean by love? Julia Carson's definition of love was this. That everybody is worthy. Everybody, I don't care who they are. Everybody is worthy and all life doesn't just have value, but equal value. That everybody is worthy. Everybody is somebody's child. Everybody is somebody's kid. So that everybody is worthy and all life has equal value. You still with me? Church say amen. So if all life is worthy and everybody has equal value, then that means that everybody deserves access to an equal high quality education. It means that everybody ought to have access to affordable health care. It means that everybody ought to have not just a minimum wage, but a living wage. Love and service, love wins. Love wins. If we have the proper definition of what it means to love. Then finally, I'll leave you with this. The great public intellectual, Dr. Cornell West, put it this way. I hope on this day you can handle West. West puts it this way. Every one of us is born between urine and feces. And every one of us one day, like Julia Carson, is going to become the culinary delight of terrestrial worms. I don't know but one person who went down and came back up. All the rest of us have to go the same way that Julia Carson has gone. What is the depth of our love? What is the quality of our service? Julia Carson understood that it's not about the love of power. A congresswoman she was. A powerful woman she was. But it's not about the love of power. It's about the power of love. Julia Carson understood that she was a soldier. And so were we. I love the old gospel song, Pastor Johnson. We are soldiers in the army. We have to fight, although we have to cry. We have to hold up the blood-stained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. Benjamin Elijah Mays put it this way. I have only but a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it. Didn't seek it, didn't choose it to me to use it I must suffer if I lose it give account if I abuse it just a tiny little minute but all of eternity is wrapped up in it Julia Carson maximized her minute now what about you In the name of Allah, God, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give him praise and thanks for his mercy and his goodness to all the members of the human family. We thank him for his prophets and the scriptures that they brought. We thank him for Moses, the Israelite prophets in the Old Testament. We thank him for Jesus and the apostles that gave us the New Testament. We thank him for Muhammad who gave us the Quran. And I greet all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> to His Excellency the Governor, Reverend Clergy, our pastor, to His Honor the Mayor, to all of the members of Congress who are present, to the beloved family of our departed sister, and to all of the friends whose life her life touched, I am honored beyond words to be here to celebrate the life of our sister Julia Carson, who is a congressman but our sister, who is a congressman, but our mother, who is a congressman, but our friend. 
On behalf of the members of the Nation of Islam, we offer to all of you peace. At a time like this, the greatest gift that we could get or have is peace. And that peace that passeth all understanding comes from our surrender to do the will of God. Our dear departed sister that lies before us has returned to him who sent her to us. The Holy Quran, which is the book of scripture of the Muslims, says that all of us must return to God. You can't return some place that you didn't come from. So God is the life giver. And so the Bible says, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. The Quran says that he gives life and he is the ultimate cause of death. And the only way that we can get here is we have to come by a law. And the beauty about God's laws, they render us all equal. All of us that are sitting here honoring our departed sister came through the law of birth. Whether we're rich or poor, white or black, ignorant or foolish, <laughs> wise, we came through that law. Our mothers bore us with fainting and pain. And the Quran says we came to this world knowing nothing. God started us off equal. That's a law. We don't come to birth in Spanish or Greek or Italian or French. We come to birth speaking a universal language. We all cry. Whether we're rich or poor, white or black, wise or foolish, come from a noble family or ignoble birth, we all speak a universal language. And when we die, we don't die in Swahili. We, we don't die in French or Spanish. We make a universal sound. <sighs> but it is in life that there's a problem. There's equality in birth, there's equality in death, but there's inequity and injustice in life because both the Bible and Quran say Adam fell. And when Adam fell by his rebellion, sin entered and death entered by sin, so all have sinned. Now we are not what we should be, we are not what we could be. But every other creature that God creates has justified its existence by being exactly what he created it to be. But when it comes to human beings, we are a caricature of what God intended for the human is greater in God's eyes than the sun, the moon, and the stars for he made everything to serve man and woman and mankind. And he called us not a glory of God, he called us the glory of God. But look at the glory of God divided in hatred and bitterness, in strife, in inequity. So the universal language that came with birth that follows in death is not in life. So God had to intervene into this house of Babel, of confused language. And he sent someone to make a universal sound in life. Now, 
You may say, well, Farrakhan, who is that man? The Bible tells you and the Quran too. It's Jesus, the Messiah. Wait now. You didn't expect that, did you? The Messiah came into the world to end the Satan.